<sighs> hey, chat. It's been a while. Um, yeah, I just got back from the Rafa Nadal Academy uh, earlier this May. So we'll see. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, I'm a little bit tan. But first question from Dave Lee. How was the flight? Jet lag? Yeah, I've never been to Europe before. Um, obviously, never been to Spain either. I've been to the Philippines quite a few times. Uh, my flight path was from O'Hare to Madrid is about um, an eight hour and 15 uh, minute flight. And then from Madrid to Mallorca, because it's an island, it's about an hour and 15 minutes in the air from there. But from Midwest uh, local time, central time in US, uh, there was a seven hour difference. So the jet lag was actually some of the worst I've ever experienced. I don't know if you guys can tell by the bags under my eyes. Uh, you know, maybe that's just with age. Um, right now it is 9.46 in Madrid, Spain, which is uh, my first layover, my only layover, because I left O'Hare, which is in Chicago, uh, around uh, 5.30. Landed here around 8.30, uh, eight hours in the air. Um, but local time, it actually is like, I'll double check, but I believe it's like almost uh, 2, 3 a.m. Um, central time, because I'm from the Midwest. So, yeah, another one hour and 15 minutes in the air to go from Madrid to Mallorca, which is my destination. I believe it's about a 30 minute uh, taxi from the Mallorca airport. I believe it's called Pamas. Don't quote me on that. Uh, to the Rafa Nadal Academy. So, this is a beautiful airport. I don't know if you guys have been here, but 10 out of 10 would recommend Madrid as an airport destination. Just landed in Mallorca. I believe it's, it is called Palma. Um, the only airport, or definitely the largest airport in uh, this uh, somewhat of a large island off the coast of Spain. But gotta find my guy. Uh, he's gonna be my taxi to go to Rafa Nadal Academy. And I gotta pick up my baggage because I did check in my racket bag. I mean, it was a Go Sport duffel bag um, that holds my rackets, my mount, and all my clothes and some of my medication. Um, I'll show you guys what that looks like in a bit once I get back to the hotel room, but I gotta find the baggage first. I'm really hungry too. What kind of drinks they serve here? Probably a lot of wine, right? Leave a comment down in the section below if you guys uh, know what the Mallorcans typically drink. Okay, so uh, today is the first uh, day of trading. Um, so keep in mind, I did the total tennis plus package. So I arrived here Sunday and the tennis schedule is Monday through Friday. I'll be hitting from uh, 8.30 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. as session, morning session. And then the second session is, I believe, I'll double check the schedule, but I believe from 2.30 to 4.30 p.m. So four hours of tennis a day times times five. Wow, I can't count right now. Um, so that's 10 hours. What I'm actually gonna do is, uh, since I have my Apple Watch here, I'll be doing um, counting, I'll be counting the active calories, which is pretty cool. But what's nice about um, this entire thing is that, yeah, you might be complaining that it's only 10 hours of tennis, but I like that because I could move around, I could, do some b-roll footage that you guys have enjoyed on this video so far and I just walk around and there's also a very very good chance that I'll be not only watching Rafa Nadal even though I believe he pulled out of Rome 
the AP, ATP Masters Rome 1000 this year um, for injury, he's still training. And what's also really nice is that after he trains on his uh, quote unquote private court, which is I believe, I believe it's over there somewhere. Um, he actually works out in the public facility here. So there's literally a chance that I could just be walking the treadmill right next to Rafa Nadal, which is pretty sweet. So I'm gonna go get some breakfast. Um, my jet lag kind of messed me up, even though I was able to get uh, about eight and a half hours of intermittent sleep, which is pretty good. Insomnia was kicking in pretty hard last night. Um, and I'm gonna grab my, uh, I'm gonna grab my package, my, like I'm gonna grab my welcome package, which includes a water bottle, which I'm sure I'll need, um, and then go on to uh, breakfast, and then my very first, my very first uh, day training at the Rafa Nadal Academy. And you can see some of these uh, youngsters. Um, they'll be getting a head start to the early morning. And shout out to my buddy Bryce, who uh, is a walk-on at University of Illinois Champaign, um, which is pretty sweet. Um, he's training here, I believe he's uh, an 11, I think he's 10.5 or 11 UTR right now. Let me know if you want me to uh, record a match playing him down in the comment section below. I'd be more than happy to set it up um, in the near future. I'll try and get it done in this in this match, as, uh, in this vlog as well. Um, maybe at a different video, because I don't want a full match play um, for this vlog type content, but I'd be more than happy to do that if you guys are interested. So. I'll leave a link to that match in this corner if it happened. <laughs> Hopefully it does. But let's get going. And don't worry guys, I'll do a full room review um, sometime later today. Just want to get going, don't want to be late. Charles Ash asking, how was the food? Well, keep in mind in Spain, they eat breakfast regularly around seven or eight o'clock to start the day. Then they have a pre-lunch called bocadillo, where it's like a small half sandwich um, and maybe some fruits or vegetables on the side. And then they have proper lunch around two or three o'clock. And then they actually have dinner from anywhere between 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. So it's pretty late. So the food was absolutely fantastic. Obviously, when it came to the Nadal Academy proper, the meals, they're a little bit more uh, almost like Americanized. Um, definitely not 100% Spanish. But when we did go to Puerto Cristo, yeah, <laughs> we got Spanish food. It's so far my favorite food um, out of the uh, international trips I've done so far. Ooh. Naturally, I couldn't sleep last night. Um, well, I did sleep. I got dinner around 9.45 p.m. And keep in mind, um, Spaniards typically eat dinner around 9, sometimes even as late as 11 o'clock. But because this is a resort with a lot of uh, non-Spanish people, I'm sure they kind of accommodated a little bit earlier time for dinner. Um, I went to bed around 10.15, 10.30 p.m. local time, and then woke up around 3.30 a.m. Um, I just can't sleep, just natural sleeping problems on top of, you know, being almost halfway around the world. But uh, yeah, gonna go get breakfast again and uh, I'll explain what day one was like at the Rafa Nadal Academy. Keep in mind, this is day two. So I'll explain day one in a second, but I'll show you the room first. So this is, I think, um, what we consider the most basic uh, room at the Rafa Nadal Academy um, as an adult. So um, in the walkway here, there's a huge mirror. Who's this guy? Uh, and then to the left, it's a bathroom. This is actually a very, very simplified bathroom. I'm really hoping that one of these days that I can have a bathroom similar to this where uh, wherever I'm ever reside. I'm right now in the condo as well. So deodorant stuff. Um, I actually bought a Pokemon toothbrush because uh, I forgot my toothbrush at home. Uh, along with toothpaste that I bought um, at a store. Yeah, where is it? Oh, where it is. 
Um, and naturally, um, bought a big bottle of gin that I killed. So uh, I gotta slow down on the drinking. I um, mean, back here is a European style toilet uh, separated with um, a nice shower. So there's a shower head here um, and a shower head here. Uh, so the removable one's nice because you gotta get that damn red clay out of my butt cheeks. It really grabs it right in there, stinks up in those unsuspecting places. So removable shower head, always a plus. Also just very nice, it's obviously a brand new, uh, a brand new room, as I said earlier. So let's go to the living room over here, living quarters. So um, I this bed looks nice. It's it's big enough, but I actually don't like it. It's uh it's not comfortable at all. You actually don't want like a super comfortable bed, but I actually have trouble sleeping. Um, part of my insomnia. So uh, the bed I think is a little bit firm. Hopefully the uh, Rafa Nadal Academy can fix that soon. And here's uh my Peter McKinnon camera bag for my camera equipment. A mini bag that you can store in it. The Go tennis bag. Um, closet space for drawers. Um, Shirts, shoes, boxers. Uh, this is pretty cool. Whoops, I think I broke something. And then a mini fridge here and even more space for more casual clothes, which I obviously didn't bring. A TV, haven't tried that out yet. Um, nightstand on each side of the bed. Um, here's my drone, the B-roll footage you guys bought. iPad, MacBook, um, other accessories for electronics. But what's really nice is, Open this bad boy up. Beautiful, beautiful Spanish mold. A little chilly, as expected. It's um, it? it's 57 degrees in Manicor right now. Um, keep in mind, the town is Manicor. The island is Mallorca. So, um, no, this is a beautiful place. They're still doing cons some construction here for. Um, the new uh, hotel units, uh, similar to mine. But luckily I can have one of the newer ones. It's just a little further away, but gotta get breakfast and then head off to uh, day two. So day one was uh, ground stroke uh, focus basically. So the morning session 8.30 to 10.30 was just hand feeding and even some uh, some feeding from the rackets, um, just movement, cross court, deep spin, all that good stuff. And then uh, we took a break and then the afternoon session, 2.30 to 4.30 was uh, like kind of like king of the court with just like uh, ground stroke drills, um, keeping track of points. If you are the highest uh, total person on your court, you move up a court. If you're the lowest, you move down. So a typical fair stuff, but the coaches here, um, they obviously all speak Spanish. Uh, one of our guys is uh, Federico. Shout out to Federico. He's from Uruguay, actually. So not exactly a local Spaniard, but definitely Spanish speaking. Um, really good coaches. Um, and I made friends, uh, so shout out to Jack, um, Tim, and Cam, who I warmed up with in the first day. But I don't know what the second day is gonna hold. It's either gonna be approach shots, volleys, or serves. We don't know yet, but stay tuned. Let's well, just love these courts. Love the orange clay or red clay. And I got to eight, uh, my 8.30 a.m. session a little bit early today, um, but I'm pretty sure this is where the doll practices for indoor hardcore. Take a look at this. It's so sick. This beautiful tennis facility, just one court. I'm like 99% sure this is where he trains. So cool. <laughs> Yes, I'm drinking two beers after my morning session, um, just because why not? And uh, the morning session was actually really, really tough. Uh, a lot tougher than I expected. Definitely tougher than the first uh, day, both morning and evening. So it's still ground stroke related. What we did was um, it was hand feeding and racket feeding. Um, we were moving a lot, not necessarily just the stroke, excuse me, not necessarily just the stroke mechanics, but moving and shifting from defense to offense and moving left and right and also 
front to back. So it was still very much ground stroke in, in, uh, ground stroke intensive. Uh, and then we ended up uh, doing some slice serve um, towards the last about 15 minutes. So um, this is by far, you know, the most tired I've been so far in terms of physically exhausted. So I actually might just take a nap. I might even skip lunch, which might be a bad idea. We'll talk about that. But I think I just limit myself to maybe one more beer after this. Um, and I'm probably gonna take a nap, probably like a 90 minute or two hour nap just because I'm super, super tired. But um, Jack, uh, one of the Spanish guys um, I linked up with in terms of, uh, you know, kind of like, who we're gonna befriend for the first like uh, day, day and a half. Uh, his right arm is injured, so Jack, get well soon. Um, and then I'm pretty excited to get some point play later this afternoon, uh, probably a lot more ground stroke oriented, uh, maybe serve, but we'll see about that. But right now, local time, it's 10.45, so we ended about 15 minutes ago. Um, gonna head back to the room, shower, uh, maybe upload a few uh, videos for you guys, and then, um, I'll see you guys later this afternoon, but I mean, day two, I burned 1,100 calories. So uh, keep this going, keep the beer going, and uh, maybe have some wine before I take a little bit of a nap. Well, uh, the wind is picking up in case you guys haven't, um, aren't able to hear uh, the wind kind of like white noise in the background while I'm talking. But one thing that I uh, didn't really talk about before I talk about this uh, afternoon session on the second day is that when people think of the Rafa Nadal Academy, people just think of like a high level adult and specifically like high level juniors, borderline pro level juniors. I'm talking like 11 UTR females and 12, 13, 13 and a half UTR males that are like between the ages of I would say like 16 and maybe 20. I mean, for example, Jaime Munar, who's I believe like top 100, if not even top 50 uh, Spanish player. Um, he, he's had a pretty good breakout year or two in 2023 and 2022. He is uh, a student or a client, I don't know what you want to call it, of the Rafa Nadal uh, Academy. But keep in mind that in case you haven't seen in the B-roll, there's like schools here. There's like legit schools here for like, I mean, all kids are like, I can't tell the age of difference of kids now because they're all like four years old. But I believe they're um, anywhere between like, in America, kindergarten through maybe like, fifth, sixth grade, and they go to class. There is a class here, I believe uh, this building is, oh, sorry, that building is the classroom. They legitimately go to school, like a typical European um, Spanish school for elementary, and then they go out and play tennis. You old kids just walking around. It's very much, um, I hope I don't understate how much this uh, tennis academy is definitely community-based in Manicor. Like it's helping the local community, it's amazing. On top of bringing in like um, world-class fanatics like myself to play relatively high level, uh, high level tennis. So it's quite amazing that all types of people are here, and not just for tennis, for school, for padel, um, for swimming and working out. It's not just tennis, it's, it's literally like a lifestyle. This is honestly like a dream come true for a tennis person like myself. So, I mean, it's freaking amazing. But I'm starting to bake in the sun. So, one second, I'll talk about this afternoon session in, uh, in a bit. I, I wouldn't say Rafa Nadal is like super expensive, um, given that I have to fly, fly halfway around the world for this, for a base price of just about um, 2,400 US dollars, but more on that later on the breakdown of how expensive this actually is. But the second day, um, it was obviously more point play competitive play instead of just hand feeding and racket feeding drills. Um, so we actually played out points, which is fantastic and I love it. The wind did start to pick up a little bit, so I did get some clay in my eye because some of the clay, um, you obviously have to maintain red clay, any type of clay. So they had to water it down, they had to groom it. But um, the wind started to pick up, uh, so some people had trouble. I adjusted um, relatively quickly just because uh, I, I like playing outdoors. But sometimes um, when the ball would hit a piece of mound, like a clumped up uh, clay and the wind picked up, like it just went right past me. I looked like an idiot, it just went past me for a winter. But I um, ended up being on the top court the entire time um, because one goes up, one goes down in the quarter four. So it's um, the, the way we, I guess, the, the 
the drills that were uh, given to us specialized in one person being on offense and one person being on defense and having the defensive player obviously hit nice and deep so they can transition to offense. And for the offensive player, it's looking for opportunities to uh, end the opponent or put the opponent his opponent more in danger. Keep in mind this is all singles drills, so a lot of calories burned. I believe I burned 1,300 calories in this afternoon session. So, um, yeah, it was fantastic. Uh, so it was 2.30 to 4.30, so, you know, it's a two-hour session of just hard-hitting, hard-hitting. So, you know, about 500, 600 calories an hour, an hour which is fantastic. So, um, I'm actually starting to feel a little bit hungry, but I'm not gonna eat um, until dinner. We're actually going in town, but, I do have a physio session in an hour, so I believe that's a like a 10 or 20 minute like diagnosis, and then uh, about a 30 minute massage. So um, I'm gonna shower on a courtesy for my masseuse because I don't want to go and smell like this. But I also need to start doing laundry because I'm out of underwear. I don't want to be on the court and the tennis balls are not the only yellow spherical thing bouncing around in my pockets. That would not be good. So. Gotta see if I can either buy compression shorts or have the laundry service. So hopefully it's pretty good. So the physio session was fantastic. Um, apparently I have a mobility issue with my right shoulder where I can't reach um, up towards my back nearly as much as my left. Um, and it's not necessarily due to muscle, right? It's, uh, I did have a shoulder injury um, back when I was, I think, I was either 18 or 19. It was a snowboarding injury where um, I landed funnily, funny on my right shoulder. I heard like a few pops, so that might have something to do with it. But um, what Megan, who's a fantastic physio by the way, she speaks like three and a half languages. Um, she told me that as long as like it's not hindering my everyday stuff and there's no pain, which is not, it's fine. And she also um, loosened up my quads a little bit. Uh, physios are, make very, very good massage therapists as well, in case you guys haven't noticed. So um, shout out to Megan and the physio, uh, the physio um, team at Rafa Nadal Academy. And uh, me, Bryce, uh, Jack, and Tim all decided that we were gonna have dinner um, at a local town on the seaside, just because uh, we wanna get out. And uh, I believe Tim has a car, he rented one, that can hold all four of us. So it's gonna be uh, an actual, like, more authentic, um, like, actual experience in terms of uh, Spanish cuisine. So it'll be fun. Enjoy more beer. Hey Bryce, is that your yacht? Yeah, how did you know? <laughs> you want to ride? <laughs> junior, you've got the junior version, right? Junior? Yeah. This one? Yes. <laughs> that one eats that one. <laughs> All jokes aside, that's Rafa Nadal's yacht. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's not Bryce's. Cigarette boats? Cigarette boats? Cigarette? Cigarette? No. I don't know. <laughs> I forgot the uh, name, but it's, it's a power boat right there. And that's his house up there. Yeah. Oh, okay. His house is like, uh, Nadal's house is like being built. And this is where Nadal lives. What town is this? Porto Cristo. Porto Cristo? Cristo. Porto Cristo. Porto Cristo. Porto Cristo. Sorry. Porto Cristo is where Nadal currently lives. Um, that mansion, I don't know if it's a mansion, but it's a big house. You guys probably can't see because I can't zoom in that much. 
Um, his house is still being built, but that's where Nadal lives. Fantastico. Yeah, yeah. Who's a good puppy? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Who's yeah, a good yeah. puppy? Alberto. Who's a good puppy? Okay. Are you playing on the hard court? Michael Menzies, how different is Spain? How does it feel? Um, in terms of like the town um, outside the academy, the academy is obviously not what you would call like typical Spanish architecture in terms of uh, civil engineering, but the streets are a lot smaller because everybody's driving smaller cars. Everybody just walks everywhere and the buildings are just, they're just different. It's hard to explain. It's definitely nothing like uh, anywhere in the US and I've been almost everywhere, uh, almost every major state in the US, but it's just everything's smaller. Everything's a lot more quaint. Everything is uh, definitely within walking distance because Europeans love to walk. Man. Living the life in España. <laughs> Imagine no, the, the second option was on a boat. Welcome to Sapedra. Massachusetts. North, north, east. It's just the, the north. Yeah. The tip. The, the tip. Yeah. Right there. Didn't get that on camera, thankfully. Definitely check it out if you've never been. It's a beautiful, beautiful state. <laughs> so apparently, it's normal for European restaurants to actually catch stuff fresh and serve it to you, unlike. Applebee's, Raisin Cane's, in and out. Oh, gracias. Oh, wow. Black paella. That looks like it feeds more than two people. Yeah, that's a lot. No, it's actually, it's very thin. Ah. So you'll see, like, it's not so much. Yeah. It's right. very, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Tag. It looks a bit better. Did I see Nadal train? Of course I did. I got some footage. Uh, there was a chance that I could have ran to Nadal just walking around, but I saw... Mark Lopez, his doubles partner, or former doubles partner, and one of his part-time current coaches just walking around. It's just fantastic seeing people you've seen on TV just use the same facilities that you are. Obviously, Nadal is, you know, a different tier. It was, thank goodness, I had a 200 millimeter zoom lens to get some B-roll footage of Nadal in slow motion training. It's sad that he's not playing Roland Garros this year, but it's just amazing seeing Nadal train, even though he was kind of limping. In case you guys are a little bit slow, hard to pick up on subtle cues, or overall just the same IQ as a typical pickleball player in the US, yesterday we went to Porto Cristo, which is Nadal's, um, he currently resides in, uh, in, that, in Porto Cristo, in that town. Uh, I think he was born in Manacor, uh, this town proper, um, but he's obviously built a house after some wealth, saw that mega yacht. But I, that was such good food. We had uh, croques. Cro croquetas? I think it's croquetas. Um, and then uh, quite a few, quite a few uh, paellas, which is fantastic. Uh, one second. <laughs> Probably wasn't supposed to do that, <laughs> but he did it too, <laughs> so it's like. <laughs> But um, we were kind of scared yesterday when we were looking at the weather for today that it was going to be not only cloudy but rainy, which definitely would have put a damper on our fun. But obviously, looking at the sky, because the rain, it filtered the air. The rain always cleans the air, which is fantastic. Smells great, a little bit of ocean, but not that fishy smell, if you know what I mean. Wink, wink. But um, I slept really well last night. A good seven and a half hours straight through. It might have been the whiskey that they poured me. Heavy-handed, really good bartenders here. Overall, amazing staff, but today's day three. So uh, we'll see what this beautiful day has in store for us. And let's see what we're gonna be working on in tennis in the morning session of day three at the Rafa Nadal Academy. I wasn't joking about like people dropping off their kids here for not only tennis, but school, um, padel. Uh, they do have a CrossFit. Uh, so <laughs> that's like one of the very few negatives I have because <laughs> they have CrossFit. But um, you know, there's, Audi's here, there's Mercedes vans, Volkswagen, um, ooh, a lot of Porsches. Good. Yeah, but they just drop off their kids here. It's, it's like a completely like community thing. It's fantastic. America really needs this. Um, I, I think the only one that does this is maybe IMG, um, but IMG is obviously not tennis specific. They have tennis, but they also um, have football, basketball, um, you know, all the major 
US Chad Sports, but um, when I looked at the prices for IMG Academy, it's freaking expensive, but I, apparently it is worth it. And the Ralph and Nadal Club, um, this little section of the, the academies where we're gonna be playing tennis for both Monday and afternoon sessions. It's all clay court, red clay, um, and I think they have, uh, I think five or six padel courts, um, but they also have like an actual club, uh, cafe. So uh, have a few beers right after, uh, right after the morning or afternoon session, which I definitely indulge in. What if it's just a beautiful day? So the morning session is done for day three. Um, it's still beautiful, a little cloudy. Um, sun is still peeking through for the most part. I would say it's about 50% clouds. But what we worked on today in the morning session was uh, approach shots, like flattening it out, taking balls on the rise, along with volleys. Shocker, Spanish tennis players playing on red clay they teach volleys, even though it was only for like 10 minutes, but it was still pretty good. We worked on kick serve. So I'm actually really, really excited for this afternoon where it's gonna be um, closing at the net. Um, I, I don't think I have the best volleys, but just looking at um, the other European uh, tennis players, it, it seems like, I can't believe I'm saying this, one of the better volleys in this uh, group of adults. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, hopefully it's gonna be high level tennis. But what I'm most excited about right now Rafa Nadal is uh, practicing, so I'm gonna try and get some B-roll footage of him for you guys to enjoy. I actually brought my uh, trusty DSLR, or sorry, mirrorless camera, Sony A7S III uh, and a 200 millimeter zoom lens. So we'll get some uh, good 4K 120 frames per second footage of Nadal practicing. Actually, screw it, here it is. Soy 78, how are the facilities? Did I ever run out of clothes? Uh, the facilities were fantastic. Um, all the courts didn't have any, the hard courts didn't have any cracks in it. The clay courts were fantastic. Um, obviously when it got a little bit wet in some of the days, it uh, when it did rain about two and a half days, um, it was unplayable, but that's obviously outside of their control as facility keepers and equipment keepers. But yeah, um, definitely the best facility in terms of tennis that I've ever been to. And surprisingly, I haven't been to too many. I haven't been to IMG. I haven't been to more Taglu. I've only been to one of the Vilash Tennis Academy in Punta Cana. But yeah, it's um, top-notch quality. And uh, thankfully, um, one of my sponsors, Go, um, gave me a really huge duffel bag that I could put my tennis clothes into and my tennis racket and some of my uh some of my camera mounts so i will leave a link to that in the description below it does help out this channel but i did run out of clothes eventually um i needed to uh do the laundry service which is only like 15 euros for a full bag which is pretty nice so yeah I, you can never bring enough clothes so i uh, did get some footage of rafa nadal which is pretty cool um and then yesterday afternoon or the, yeah, afternoon, not the evening session. Yesterday afternoon, um, we ended up playing some uh, some competitive points and some doubles with serves, which is fantastic. Um, and the half week people, because uh, they're combining some of the people who are staying here for three days, which is the half week and full week people. Um, some of the half, the half week people, the half week people are done for um, this type of session. So the only people that are staying for this Thursday, because today's Thursday and Friday, and then Saturday are uh, the full week people, such as myself. So it's sad to see, uh, I think uh, Tim is one of the uh, gentlemen from New York that we ended up um, linking up as a group, um, is headed back to, uh, you think, I think he's traveling around Europe, but he, he's leaving the academy. So props to you, Tim. See you around, man. And then uh, we met up with uh, a, Bul a Bulgarian guy. They speak French. And there he is. Um, and we ended up playing some tennis later. And then today, uh, right now, it's pretty nice. Gonna get some breakfast. 
then get started for the day. Follow. <coughs> Later today, I gotta buy some gifts for uh, both my mom, my dad, uh, Brian, who uh, you know, is featured on my channel a lot. Um, I would already use my main doubles partner now. Uh, Olivia, a uh, friend of mine from the, sport, uh, the sports club I belong to. Um, maybe Chris, if I have enough money, we'll see. Chris has been a bad friend lately. You hear me, Chris? Always underappreciated and never overappreciated in any type of vacation resort is the support staff, janitorial, cleaning, hospitality, reception, top notch here. Good job, Rafa Nadal. <laughs> There's seriously nothing like walking outside. Yeah, it's a little bit chilly right now, a little bit cloudy, in case you guys can't tell. But just having that fresh air of a beautiful morning for clay court tennis at like a resort, specifically a good one, like uh, <laughs> this academy. There's really nothing like it. I'm feeling good. Um, my lower back is a little bit sore. My knees were giving me problems yesterday. That went away. Um, had a good breakfast, big enough, but not too big. This is one of those like feeling, I'm vibing. I'm vibing as what you Zoomers would say. It's a good vibe. Always one big contingency in um, outdoor resorts like this because I think there's only like five maybe four indoor courts they're all hard court um, is what happens when it's raining I don't know if you guys can tell but um, cloud is uh, sky is cloudy gray uh, the ground is uh, I would argue unplayable at best even on clay because uh, it seems to be all washed out it's been raining like this or heavier for about uh, 90 minutes and I think I, I took a nap for almost two hours just to reset. So we're playing at a, a semi-covered indoor court in red clay, which is fantastic. So my grunts are gonna be even louder. Six semi-covered indoor clay courts. Pretty sick, huh? Uh, Sweeta is asking, did people get injured? Yeah, some people already came in with a shoulder injury. Tim had a shoulder injury, unfortunately. And then I, uh, I thought my calf muscle was like worse than it was, but um, it's better now, just a little bit sore. But from my injury, it was just overuse. Um, and I, I don't exactly train lightly. Every time I'm on the tennis court after warm-up, I go 100%. I never let a ball bounce twice unless I have no chance to. Um, I always run everything down, but eventually, yeah, my left calf muscle just kind of gave away, unfortunately. But other than that, um, some people got tired, some people got fatigued. That's normal, but no, uh, no serious injuries other than mine, thankfully. Okay, so yesterday afternoon, um, we went into the uh, six semi-covered clay court, which is freaking amazing. The ceilings were high enough. 
and sorry about the echo. The ceilings were high enough to where uh, lobs were really effective, which is fantastic, because I work on my lobs a lot. Uh, we're doing construction here. So it's, um, we worked on developing the points with the forehand, which is, um, it's probably a weakness of mine in most situations in singles. I really love my one-handed backhand. Ooh, it's crispy today in a good way. A little bit cloudy, so I'm gonna get even more B-roll footage later for you guys to check out. Um, if you guys are interested in getting the pictures um, for you guys to hang up on your uh, on your wall, in your home, your bedroom, your kitchen, or even as a screensaver, I'll leave a link to uh, where you can download uh, free photos with a donation, obviously, but it's free. But I'd suggest you guys donate if you can afford it down in the description below because I love photography stuff. Hopefully I can be a professional photographer one of these days um, of the Rafa Nadal Academy. Today's a perfect day to do it as long as it doesn't rain, which it might later this afternoon, because when you're doing photo stuff or video stuff, uh, especially from a drone perspective, um, you don't want it to be too sunny, but you don't want it to be super cloudy either. So like half cloudy, half sunny, which I think it will be around 12 o'clock, 12.30 is what's gonna happen today uh, on this island. But um, yeah, I mean, that's the best I could do besides golden hour. Um, so. We worked on the developing the singles points with the forehand. Went really well, burned a lot of calories. I almost got injured. I actually did get injured for a bit. This stupid thing again. Um, I pulled my left calf muscle. I don't know if it's a pull or a strain, but uh, I didn't hear anything pop, thankfully, but um, it was just tight in the afternoon. And then I played some doubles uh, with, uh, with Jacques and uh, a Frenchman and uh, someone from Belgium. Um, and when I went for a poach from the deuce, from the ad side to the deuce side at the net, I, uh, it tightened up extremely sharply. Um, but right now it's just sore. It actually feels like 95% good. So as long as I take it slow today, I think we'll be fine. But this is the last day, my last day at the Rafa Nadal Academy. I leave tomorrow at 6.30 in the morning because my flight at Palma, which is 40 minutes away, Palma to Madrid, takes off around 9.15, 9.30, so. Ooh, the sun's feeling nice. Let's do this, the last day here. So I'm 33 years old. Been playing tennis since I was, uh, been playing tennis since I was uh, in first, no, sorry, third grade. So around nine years old, first time this ever happened to me. <laughs> I, uh, I strained a calf muscle, um, probably because there's way too much muscle down there. I mean, look at these things. So yesterday during the um, afternoon session in the semi indoor cover courts, uh, I felt like it kind of like tweak a little bit, but nothing out of the ordinary. And then when we played doubles um, later that evening, I felt like uh, something more major. Um, it was sore this morning. It was sore last night during dinner after I took a nap. Thought I'd be fine. But um, during the warm up, a uh, high heels slash sprinting warm up, we didn't even pick up a tennis racket yet. It pulled again. So, um, at the advice of, the, of myself, my co uh, the coaches there, um, kind of, I mean, I made it halfway through the morning session, which isn't too bad, but um, do ice pack, um, ice bath, hot bath, ice bath, hot bath, alternating for about. Ice bath, hot bath, alternating for anywhere between 30 seconds to a minute. So uh, I'm gonna see if I can get a massage for even 30 minutes, if they're available. Um, I know it's kind of last minute, but I think massage will definitely help. Um, and then we'll see how the afternoon session looks like. Uh, so sorry about that, guys. Couldn't last it, but the return service was pretty good. Uh, they, they were serving pretty hard at us. They, they knew that we, we were ballers, we could hit. But I was maybe like 25, 50% of my footwork speed, which is unfortunate. Um, I thought it was gonna get better throughout the morning session, like 30 minutes in after I warmed up, and then it just it just was getting even more sore, more stiff. So I, so I feel sorry for the group of three that I left, including Jock, Ingo, and uh, Ali. The Ingo and Ali are the two uh, two German guys that are built like footballers. And Sweet is also asking, did I party? Well, <laughs> what do you think? You and I took a, a week out in uh, Punta Cana for the Vilasha Tennis Academy with Ryan, right? Of course I partied. We went to uh, 
We went to the biggest city in the island called Palma, which is where the airport's located, about 40 minutes away from Manacor, which is where the Nadal, Rafa, Rafa Nadal Academy is located. Um, and I think, yeah, um, Palma has about 500,000 people. So it's about half the population of the island in that major city. Um, yeah. Well, I went, to, uh, I went to quite a few bars. <laughs> it was a fun time. Spanish women are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Palma de Mallorca. So Bryce almost shit himself, <laughs> and so did I because. Holy shit! When you walk in, this is hotel court in. Um, in Palma, Madrid. Oh I, we, Americans what are, the hell? Americans aren't used to two-story hotel what? rooms. Why is there skulls and shit? What? Oh yeah, this is sweet, man. It's small, but it's super bougie. Super bougie. Super bougie. We, Dude, this is like a dream. Well, we theoretically could shower together, no homo. No homo. Dude, this is like a dream. This is a movie, bro. Bro. It's pretty sick, huh? So the hotel is absolutely insane. It's small, it's quaint, it's everything that I wanted in a European hotel in a somewhat major city. There's actually a Starbucks in uh, literally two, two stores down from the hotel entrance, but the line is extremely long and it looks like we're gonna get ice cream. And now, do you guys want a pizza? It's like in a, we're like in a forest. Apparently the, Two ladies are gonna have me go uh, shopping in a non-American store, so I don't look like an American tourist in a t-shirt and basketball shorts. So we'll see what store I'll be at next. European mark. So like, obviously when it comes to stuff like in uh, uh, Porto Cristo, which is that small town that Nadal now lives in, um, it's, it's still the same architecture as here, but just on a bigger scale like uh, about two blocks back there we saw two restaurants and then not only did they have dining inside the restaurant there was like a small alleyway that people could dine in too like literally a small alleyway and you definitely don't see that anywhere in the states predominantly which is fantastic um so right now it, it is cooling down i'm really really happy i brought this jacket almost everybody in spain here has a dog it seems like <laughs> So I want to pet all the dogs, um, but we're getting some tapas. I need a beer or wine or two, but people are just walking around. I mean, it, yeah, it is a major city, but like even something like Milwaukee, and Milwaukee and Palma are pretty comparable. Palma's, I think, five, 600,000. Milwaukee is 650, 700,000. So it's just a different lifestyle. People are just out and about socializing, having drinks. Everybody's well behaved, the children are well behaved. It's just a good old time. I'm gonna miss this. I didn't know uh, CIA drones made it all the way to Spain. Weird. It's about seven o'clock local time and uh, we still haven't eaten. And uh, the girls plan, um, our tourists, AKA the ladies, um, they have to be back because they have to be up at 5 a.m. tomorrow uh, for a tennis tournament for traveling. So um, we're trying to find an early dinner, maybe some tapas, but the most popular, the most, um, the restaurant that we wanted to get just uh, had a long line. And in Europe, uh, for the most part, uh, they don't like have a like call reservation. It's first come, first serve. So on the hunt still. That paella, man. <laughs> All right, anyway, cheers. 